An example of an escape run under a resultant G of 2.5 is shown in the following sequence, and the subject's own commentary during his escape has been recorded. Hi, my name is Esley Thompson, and I'm outside the centrifuge building. Let's go take a look. So, I'm here with Sue. It's very nice to meet you. And you. Um, thank you for coming to speak to us. Um, okay, so I have a few questions for you. Fine, fire ahead. Cool. So, what was the early production of the centrifuge like? I'm not exactly sure because it was well before my time, but it was actually constructed in the early 1950s. And we have some amazing photographs in the Fast Archive that actually show the construction of the building and the machine and we kind of a laugh about the, uh, the complete lack of health and safety in the 1950s. Of course. What made you want to take part in the centrifuge? I have a, a love of aviation and flying, and I was actually a qualified pilot, and I had done some fast jet flying as part of my job. But my husband, who is a test pilot here, he actually volunteered me to actually go on the centrifuge. Very, very nice of him. Really? Um, and I found I really loved it. That's awesome. How did you take part in the human centrifuge? So I was involved in a, a number of trials, um, looking at things like the, the typhoon flying clothing, life support systems, but also some weird and wonderful experiments that, that the doctors dreamt up, which I'm not really sure what they were about, but they were fun. Uh, when experiencing the G-force, was there any pain or discomfort? No, not really, but you just felt really, really heavy, um, because G makes every part of your body weigh that much more. So yeah, you would sort of sink into the seat. Uh, and just feel, as I said, heavy. Did it help you prepare for the G-force of an aircraft? Yes, it did. I mean, as I said, I had already flown fast jets, so I had experienced G actually in the aircraft as well before I was a centrifuge subject. But yes, it was very good to actually test the equipment and see how it was going to work under G before then putting it and flying in the aircraft. How is the centrifuge used today in modern aircrafts? So today, um, in the UK, we have a very high-performance modern centrifuge based off of RAF Cranwell, and that's like a, it's a giant flight simulator. So the, the subject or the pilot actually flies the centrifuge with visuals and everything else, and then it just gives you the G-force on top of that. Why was the invention of the centrifuge necessary? For safety reasons, mainly. So to start with, they... they um, did research and trials in an aircraft, but the effects of G on the human body means that you lose your vision and ultimately consciousness. So it's clearly not safe to do that in an aircraft. And also, if you do trials, you have to do the same thing over and over again. And again, you can't replicate the same run in an aircraft like you can in the centrifuge. Cool, awesome. So that was all of our questions. Okay. So thank you for talking to me. Uh, Pleasure. I really appreciate it. And. G, accelerative force, is another complication which, in a spiral or spin, can make it difficult for air crews to reach the exit. Its effect can be tried out and studied in the human centrifuge, at one end of which is a compartment representing the inside of an aircraft. While the machine is stationary, it is, of course, perfectly easy to walk about in the compartment. But it's a different matter when the arm starts to rotate. The effort necessary to perform the simple act of walking across the compartment and back is obvious, demonstrating that in certain circumstances it may be quite difficult to reach the escape exits. When the, the controller hits the start button, this will start to rotate. You can see this knob here is spring-loaded uh, against the side of the cab. As this rotates, this is going to then move in in a controlled way. It's pivoted here 
attached to a potentiometer, that sends a signal down to the plant room to say this is the speed I want the motor to be going at at this moment in time. Here is the plant room, which is the brain and powerhouse of the entire building. The incredible amount of electrical machinery in here takes power from the national grid and converts it to spin the centrifuge arm under particular control to test specific G-forces. This also uses a motor speed control system. In this room houses the control desk, the program cam unit, and various audiovisual communication devices. It also shows a view from the gondola camera, showing the centrifuge, subject, and the teletalk system. The equipment in here is still mostly from 1955, when the centrifuge was built. I have been Esley Thompson, and this has been the Centrifuge Building. I hope you enjoyed, and I hope you learned as much as we did.